Hey guys, Zada from Lucipixel, and welcome back. You probably know this already, but in case you don't, in case you've been living a very sheltered life the last few years, artists are in the process of experiencing, in real time, history unfold. Our future, our purpose, our meaning is currently on trial, literally. I just posted a three-piece video, a three-part video covering this monumentally important Senate hearing uh, featuring, of course, uh, on behalf of artist Carla Ortiz, who I recommend you reach out to and send a lot of love because she's been uh, she's been at the helm. She's been leading the charge in this regard, along with her friends and stuff. But she's been the one appearing in the Senate. That said, um, as important a subject as this is, and as potentially damaging that this could be if we let it slide ignorantly, I don't feel it's all that bad. And what I mean by that is I don't think that this, what's going on right now with AI and AI imagery is all bad. Now, you can stop the video right here and go down into the comments and just let me have it. Just rip me a new one right now because, <laughs> no, hold off. Don't get, don't, don't get ahead of yourself yet. Let me explain why. I do not think that having our imagery, having our, our likeness, having our style taken and acquired and used illegally to train artificial intelligence programs to be a good thing. I stand behind the artists that are fighting on our behalf, and I stand on the side of the argument that I've spent my entire life, and you, my, my peers, my friends, my family, you have spent your entire lives working towards developing this marketable skill, being able to leave your mark and share your stories and your vision with the world around you. And I stand behind you and protecting that which you have worked so hard to achieve. But it's not all bad. Not what's happening right now and what I'm witnessing being at the center of, of what's happening right now, myself on my channel, I can tell you that I have lived this before. And no, I'm not talking about an earlier video where I spoke about my experiences in 3D. No, I'm talking about several of the experiences that I've had in my life when we were on the brink, when we were, when, when life itself, when our safety, when our stability, when the rhythm of life as we knew it was being rattled. And one such experience that I have been, I have brought up in, a, in art talks in the past was the ice, ice storm, the huge, long, uh, terrible ice storm that hit Eastern Canada and parts of Northeastern USA as well, that for many people across this part of the country uh, were out of power for weeks and even months. We actually, since this past winter, we actually had another another short ice storm that lasted about, I was out of power for about a week, which was pretty significant. Long enough to cause all the food in your fridge to rot. Long enough for me to have to camp in a house overnight for three nights while my family stayed somewhere warm so I could make sure my cats were safe. Waking up in the middle of the morning where I could see my breath in my own bedroom. That's pretty dramatic, isn't it? and living in the dark with flashlights kind of sucks ass. <laughs> but back in 99, it was a much bigger deal. Back in 1999, the, for a lot of people, the entire, this entire portion of the country was a ghost town. It was pitch black. It was a frozen landscape. It, it was actually, in some ways objectively beautiful when downtown Montreal, where I was, or the entire city, all the neighborhoods around Montreal were literally crystal palaces. <laughs> it looked like the, the 
the ice witch had had cursed the city and this lasted a long time at day one day two when the power was out well it happens after one week people start to really worry after a week and a half the city starts to go into panic mode and starts hoarding things grocery stores start having to use candlelight to light the aisles and then by week two two and a half something starts to happen people start coming out of the woodworks and start to to realize that if we don't do something if we don't do something dramatic something significant then we're in serious trouble so for the first time in decades since i had since i was born pretty much in that part of town um, people started to emerge from their homes people that were normally homebodies introverts all of a sudden people start to realize i've got to get out of my house i've got to start doing something to to get help and to help others it just becomes instinctive to to start to band together and one of the things that this ice ice storm that this challenge that this tragedy in many cases taught us as people in the modern era was that in order for us to survive in order for us to thrive we need each other we need each other i wouldn't eat if the guy who worked at the pizza shop up the street decided to open his doors to make lukewarm coffee and warm up pizzas on a bunsen burner because all of his ovens were were off and offer a place for comfort i wouldn't have been able to eat or get the necessities that i needed for myself for my family if the grocery store closed and somebody didn't find a way to keep those doors open and then somebody volunteered a couple of people volunteered to be security because their security systems weren't working all of a sudden we're thrown into this place where people start looking out for for needs of others and filling those demands to see doctors and physiotherapists and and accountants offer to help move some uh, to carry somebody's groceries or to help an old woman walk up the street that was that was basically a skating rink to lift huge logs of wood that had fallen on top of cars and parts of people's houses and help to to tape up and and put plastic up on the sides of houses where branches had broken through and there was cold air getting in it was pretty dramatic seeing this happen and I started to meet and get to know neighbors that I never knew existed. It was a very, very difficult, challenging time. There were people who took advantage of this situation. There were people who, who took advantage of the blackout and the overwhelmed authorities and police officers to loot homes. Some people were irresponsible or unsavvy and tried to light propane barbecues inside their house and poison themselves to death. Pretty bad things happened. But the majority of what was going on was com the community started to band together. A community that up until that point for, for many, many decades were complacent comfortable had everything they needed they had their television they had the radio they had their phones they had everything they needed took it all for granted and then all nature needed to do was flick the switch just turn off the electricity for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden we realized we were thrown back 200 years in history where all of a sudden we had to light by candle and all of a sudden we had to we had to fend for ourselves and find ways to keep our food fresh and put boxes outside on the back porch. And if you notice somebody who didn't have food, you take some food out of that box and you give it to your neighbor. Would I want to go through that again? Well, it was very, very difficult. It was very challenging. It was not fun. You know, taking cold showers is not, not fun. But I don't regret it. I don't regret going through that difficult time. 
And when I posted these last few videos, when I basically a commentary on the court trials going on, kind of talking about the different people involved from Stability AI and from Adobe and UMC and uh, and of course from the illustration side of things and the different judges that were presiding over and the questions that were being asked and the body language of the different people there. As I was going over it and talking about it, um, what was truly amazing to see was that this is a topic that is so frightening for so many of us and so meaningful and and um, impactful to our lives that tens and tens of thousands of people have seen those videos but they haven't only seen the videos if you look at the analy analytics everybody who's watched it almost everybody who's watched it who's, who has watched it all the way through to the end from a YouTuber's perspective, that's remarkable because because there wasn't a single one of those videos that was under an hour long. Most people usually tap out around the 15, 20 minute mark. My art talks are usually quite long, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes sometimes. I look at the analytics and very often the analytics show that, that people start losing interest after about 12 to 15 minutes. But this trial... People stuck it through an hour, an hour and a half. They left hundreds and hundreds of comments. They were incredibly proactive. There were people chiming in from different domains, people who weren't only artists, but they were also they also worked in programming or worked in AI development. There were lawyers that were chiming in. There were accountants that were chiming in. There were people that had had experiences with Adobe themselves or had, had dealt with copyright, copyright infringement with their music or with their artwork. All of these people chimed in. It was a huge, active community of people, and it's still going strong. Go and check it out for yourself. The last few videos I posted on my channel as of Wednesday, August 2nd, when I'm recording this. What's happening is our comfort, our safety, our security is being challenged. And I think from a human perspective, from a professional's perspective, I think this is necessary. It reinforces your resolve. It refreshes your sense of purpose. It reminds you that you are not alone in this community sitting behind a desk and drawing. That's only one fiftieth of what you truly are as an artist. As an artist, you're a member of a community you share a common passion, you share a common desire, you share a common language, and you need to understand that sharing that, by sharing your talent, sharing your passion, sharing your voice with other people, you are letting other people know, I'm here too. You're letting other people know, I'm a part of this community, I'm listening to you, I can, rep I can reply to you, I understand you. The reason why my channel exists is because it's community. It's a meeting place where we can all find each other. It's that place that one of the places that you can go when the power goes out and you're reaching out for help from somebody else. That's what this is. It's a community. And that's the whole reason why I did those AI hearing videos in the first place, because we could all meet together in, a, in one place and we could all share our thoughts and feelings, our fears, our hopes, a couple of trolls, which we, I, I booted out very, <laughs> very quickly. That's what this is all about. If you, all you do is sit here and whine and complain that that all it's all over there's there's no point there you know we might as well give up and throw in the towel right now i'm telling you right now when times are tough and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to go and your stability your lifestyle your your livelihood is being challenged you are not going to be the person that people reach out to for help you will not be regarded as an active and helpful member of the community. People don't gravitate towards people who give up in tough times. People who say, oh, screw it. Ah, I thought it was going to be easy. Now now things have gotten, now there's challenge. Ah, this AI is going to come. It's going to steal everybody's job. I'm just going to give up. If that's your attitude, stop. 
because people need you. Your community needs you. They don't need you to answer all their questions for them. They don't need you to pick up the pencil and do the artwork for them. They need you to, to have that sense of belonging. They need you to know that we're in this together. Yes, it's tough, but if we band together, then we can figure it out. You need to make yourself available as, as a member of this community. Carla Ortiz, who I praise endlessly because she deserves it. it. I'm not only praising her because she's been so active. I'm not praising her because she's a really awesome artist who's worked on big projects. Yes, that's admirable. It's amazing. But honest to goodness, that's not why I give a shit about Carla. That's not why I'm promoting her. That's not why I'm making thumbnails on my YouTube videos showing off what a star she is. I'm doing it because she represents a beacon of hope. She represents somebody that we can find ourselves through. She is a leader in this industry, but not because she's better. It's because she just effing chooses to do it in the first place. It's because she put herself out there. She stood in front of the camera. She swallowed her nerves and prepared herself. And she, st she sat in front of that, that, that those cameras in front of Senate, an incredibly intimidating place, just for the sake of speaking on our behalf. She is setting an example of something you can be too. You can stand right next to her and you can join her on this. If you're inclined, if you have any kind of expertise, if you have the energy, if you have the time, if you have the passion to do something that can better everybody else, let that be known. And this is hopefully an example that you will be able to learn from and carry with you moving forward. No, I didn't enjoy one bit of the ice storm. It was uncomfortable. It was inconvenient. It was lonely. You know, being in a house that's cold is a very lonely feeling. It makes you feel very vulnerable. But I wouldn't trade that experience for the world because all of the greatest experiences I've ever had, all of the greatest learning moments I've had in my life, be it through hardship, be it through chronic pain that I've been spoken about quite a bit, these are all experiences in my life where nature has said, Adam, wake up. You've got something to learn. It's time for you to become a, a better, tougher, wiser version of yourself. And that's exactly what's happening with AI right now. Right now, artificial intelligence came at the perfect time. It came at a time when we, when we were losing our sense of purpose because all we ever did was sit alone in our home and slowly develop scoliosis and carpal tunnel syndrome and draw, draw, draw until somebody says you're good enough and then hopefully you get a paycheck for it. And that is, in my opinion, a very limited vision on your future because you are so much more than that. You didn't just become an artist so you could draw. You didn't just become an artist so you could hand some director or client a drawing you did and get a paycheck for it. You're an artist because you have the gift to communicate. You're an artist because you have this, this insatiable fire, this desire, this drive to share your feelings and thoughts with other people. This is one of the things that makes artists so wonderful. We're not just offering a service. We're offering a piece of ourselves not only our technical selves and our creative selves, but our emotional selves. And don't take that for granted. And hopefully what's happening right now, now that we're being challenged, now that we've been pinned up against the wall by bigger, stronger, more capable algorithms and softwares and billionaires, that instead of buckling under the weight of it, we'll band together and become something greater and have a renewed sense of purpose and a new sense of focus. And we will be reminded that we are greater than the sum of our own parts. Okay. And with that said, I love you with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.